So one of the other things that you need to uh, consider as we are sketching, like I said, it's okay if you need to, to kind of move your paper the way you want to be comfortable with. But one of the other ways is to position your body in a way that's going to be comfortable, that's going to work towards your advantage. So, so notice, so here we'll talk about it. I kind of already talked and kind of showed you this, like if I have the backside of my hand flat, how I can just kind of pivot like this. Now let me get this a little bit closer to the camera. I can just pivot like this to help me make straighter lines. So the other thing that I can do is if I use my elbow, I can also kind of just pivot at that elbow and keep nice straight lines going as I get longer lines there too. And uh, this is something that you have to practice at. It doesn't come easy. Uh, you practice, but you'll get there as you go. Again, remember we're training our brain to be in sync with our hand and put everything on a paper. So to start off with, um, we talked about different line types a little bit in the past. You guys have been looking at uh, them on the uh, blueprints that we've been making stuff from. So you've noticed that there are, uh, in addition to our object lines and some hidden lines and some of those different ABC lines, we also have some border lines. So we're gonna practice right now. I want you to basically come about a half an inch away from each edge in the corner. And we're just gonna put a dot dot about a half an inch so I don't know if you can see that but I just put a dot about a half an inch from each corner of that paper so okay but we're going to use those dots on that paper to draw some vertical lines and some horizontal lines we're going to start with the horizontal line and I'm going to show you how you can make a long line uh, in one fell swoop of the pencil. So just by using my elbow and pivoting it. Now, when I do this, so I want everybody just to watch and pay attention to how I do this first, and then I'm gonna give you guys the opportunity to do it yourself. So I'm gonna put my pencil on the dot that I made over here. And I'm gonna kind of rest again so that I'm making one fell swoop from the left side of my paper over to the right side of the paper. And when I do this, even though my dot is over here on the left side corner, I'm gonna be looking at that dot on the right side of the corner. And as I look, I'm gonna draw my hand right on over there. So here I go. Again, I'm gonna pivot and you're gonna just make that one fell swoop over to there. I'm gonna do the same thing down here where I'm making that one fell swoop down to there. And I'm gonna get those two long horizontal lines. Again, I didn't make short strokes. It was just one long line going over. Your guys' turn. Go ahead and practice and get those two lines on your paper. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with these vertical lines. So I'm going to start up top at that dot that's up top corner. And I'm gonna go straight down. Now in this case, I can just kinda go straight down like this. So, and I'm looking at that bottom dot. So we're just kinda connecting those dots. So we call those border lines. Those are our border lines. The border lines are used to divide, to define your drawing area. So. So we're going our drawing area is going to be inside here inside those border lines. But I also want to make what is called a title block. So at the same time, I'm going to go from this bottom line, I'm going to go up about a half an inch and I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to draw another horizontal line about a half an inch up right on over there like that. So this is going to be what we refer to as our title block. So now from there, I'm going to do some vertical lines. I'm going to split that in half. Then the right side, I'm going to split in half. And the left side, I'm going to split in half. Because we're going to put information in here 
in these four blocks that's referred to as our title block. So, so this first thing in the title block, uh, we're going to name that drawing. So what this drawing is called. And in this case, it's gonna be horizontal lines. Now, bear with me for a second. Let me get this in there and then I will show you. So, all right, so here is my title block. So I don't want any of my lettering touch any part of the title block. And I want that lettering to kind of be equally spaced and centered. So if I've got a half an inch space, my lettering is gonna be about a quarter inch tall which will leave me about an eighth of an inch on both the top and bottom. So this is just kind of the way we, again, are using some of our fractions as we go. And then I want you to hand print as neatly as you can, horizontal line, horizontal line. That is the title of this sketch. So horizontal line. And when we do this, we always print. We don't write in cursive, we always print. So now the next block or the next uh, part is where we're gonna put your name. So uh, here I've got Mr. Curry. You guys are gonna put your first initial and your full last name. So in that next block, go ahead with your first initial and then your full last name. Again, Try to keep it centered, so as close as and as much as possible, and, and don't let any of your lettering touch any of the border or title block line. So, so that'll be your name. That third spot is going to be intro to industrial tech, but we're gonna abbreviate it since that's a lot of uh, letters. So I'm just gonna type in intro, to IND period so that we identify this as your class. So in that third one right there, so intro to IND for intro to industrial tech or intro to industrial. So, and then in that last block of our title block, we're gonna put today's date. So in April, I'm gonna spell out April, 13th, 2021. So in that last block area there, today's date, April 13th, 2021. We're gonna talk about uh, the importance of dating uh, our sketches and our drawings here in just a minute. So, so I'll let you guys go ahead and get all of that. Again, that's called our title block. So. As we go through with the rest of these sketches, you guys will draw your border lines on each one. You'll draw your title block, your name, and of course, intro to dust industry will stay the same. So will today's date, although when we come back in on another date, we'll change that date. And then of course, the title of the actual sketch or drawing will also change. All right, now, here is my question. We're talking about industrial design. We're talking about creating blueprints and working drawings and working blueprints for industry or for manufacturers to make stuff with. Why can any of you think of a reason why it might be really, really important to put a date on any of your design ideas or sketches that you might be working on in industry? So, no. Go ahead. So, Trey, if you got somebody there with an answer, so go ahead and uh, turn your mic on for just a second and let's hear some of your answers. So you can see that you're the original creator. Okay, so you, you can uh, tell and see whether you're the original creator. That's a good point. But why is that important or why might that matter? What do you think? You can prove that you're the first one. Exactly. So you can prove that you're the first one that kind of came up with this idea and this design. So even if you think about like our iPhones, you know, 
Was iPhone the first company that created a uh, mobile telephone? No, they weren't. There were other companies that first came up with the mobile telephone and the idea of the mobile telephone. So, uh, however, are there lots of companies that are competing to try to make a product like this and get that out to market? Certainly, there are. So, so from an industrial standpoint, uh, you want to first protect your design ideas. So, and you want to safeguard, especially if it's a invention or, uh, or a brand new idea that you're trying to take to market. So you might have competitors that are also out there looking at it by dating your sketches, by dating your drawings and put that on there. Uh, if you were ever sued or if it ever came up in a court of law uh, or something with uh, different competitors, this is a way to prove that you were the first person to come up with that idea and that you should have uh, exclusive rights to be able to sell that over, say, a competitor who might have seen something with yours or maybe there's some corporate espionage or something like that that went on. But this is a way for companies to prove that they were the first ones to design and do that. So, so that's why this date on drawings is very, very important. There are also another reason for a date on drawings, especially with working drawings. Um, again, and I'll kind of go back to the whole idea here of the clock or of the uh, uh, of our cell phone. So the cell phone itself and the technology here has changed a lot from the time this first came out. And I received my and got my first cell phone back when I uh, was managing a company out in Pennsylvania. I think it was like 1997 when I first got the first cell phone, that was a very, very different cell phone than the cell phones that we have today. So there have been modifications, there have been changes made to it. So, so the other thing with dating this is it also kind of tracks product history and the design changes that have taken place over time of that particular product. So uh, in the case today, I think we're up to like an iPhone 8 as opposed to the iPhone 6 or whatever the uh, version of iPhone are. So so you have all of that going on uh, when we're creating these type of drawings. Now, since I titled this horizontal line, so as we start to practice this, uh, again, we're gonna use dots and I'm gonna come in about one inch and I want you to create dots. We're gonna create three series of dots about one inch from the left and the right borderline. So then we're gonna keep about one inch spacing between those. So just put a dot on both sides, three of them, because we're gonna use this to practice making those horizontal lines. You're gonna see you probably the first time uh, as you go through, we're gonna get better until we can do this without having any dots as well. And again, we start you get your arm fixed so that you can pivot at your elbow. And as we start from the left side, we're looking at that dot on the right side and you're going straight across. One nice fell swoop going across, connecting the dots. Eventually, we're just doing this as a string of horizontal lines going down the paper, trying to get as straight as you can. Now notice. I had a little bit of curve here. I didn't connect the dot. So my eye, my brain, and my hand weren't all in sync with each other as we went there. So, and I expect as you guys do first start with this, that some of this will uh, work out pretty well. Um, some of this won't as you kind of practice. That's why we practice these sketching techniques. You're training your eye, hand, and brain to be able to do this. So now, I'm also going to do the same thing now with some vertical lines, just again to sketch and practice. So, uh, a series, you can kind of put your dots along the line. I'm going to go from right to left in this case. And by the way, if you are left handed, so you just reverse this, it's okay if you're left handed. So, again, these are sketches. So, and now just try to keep those lines as straight vertically as you can and it's just one smooth stroke all the way down your paper to get that kind of a grid so 
try to keep them as straight as possible, more or less connecting this up. So, and this again is just practice so that we can get these horizontal and vertical lines down on paper. Okay. I'll let you guys finish up. I'm going to switch my paper out for the next sketch. So. A lot of sketching when we're just uh, doing sketching is really just a matter of uh, geometry and geometric shapes. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about the geometry of shapes. Here as we go. So if you are finished with your horizontal lines, go ahead and get your borderline and your title block started on the next sheet of paper. So again, I said uh, on each of these, we're going to keep the borderlines the same. And I like to have you do this because it helps give you more practice. So Okay, this one, this drawing, we're going to uh, name uh, circles. We're going to name this one circles. That's the title of this sketch. My name. Intro to industry. Again, as you go, print as neatly as you can. If we are going to bat against another company as far as who was the uh, first one to come up with an idea, if we mess up and they can't really read our handwriting, then the judge uh, or the jury might call into question whether it was really uh, you or not. So. so, and we're gonna do some labeling in here as well. So we're going to start up here at the top corner. Now again, I'm going to just put that circles up here. When we are drawing and sketching again, remember we don't want anything at all to touch our border line or our, our title block line. We want to try to keep those together. And we also want to try to kind of keep spacing uh, equal on all four sides. So, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But so we're going to practice with a series of circles here, just sketches. So uh, some of you are going to be better at this than others. So, and to draw that circle, I'm going to start at the top, and then I'm just going to kind of go full the way around. Notice again how I keep my hand rested, and I just kind of move my pencil around. So. To make that circle and I'm going to do a series of four right here. Let's see again. It's just a matter of practicing. Now notice I got a little tail on there. So we want to try to make our uh, our marks kind of connect up with each other. So, so that we don't get any tails on our lines and we get a nice clean circle. So all right, we'll go ahead and try. Let's get a series of four circles going across, kind of keep them up because we're going to do some other stuff in this space here as well. So that you can uh, see that going in here. All right. Now, since we drew circles, the next thing we need to do is again, some of this is a review of geometry, I hope, so that you guys understand uh, what we're talking about when we get into drawing some of these basic shapes. So our next shape that we are going to uh, uh, draw that's a curve is going to be an arc. Now arc, in this case, is gonna be a full 180 degree arc. So, and I'm gonna do this one as the left side. So again, I'm gonna come up here, and I'm going to do a 180 degree arc, like I can see. I'm going to go this way on the other side. I'm going to go the other direction with it, with that arc. 
And again, notice how I'm just kind of smoothly using, my hand is rested and I'm just kind of moving my pen or pencil to create those curves. So here we got this like that. And over here, I can kind of come in here and I can segue from the one to the other, kind of look like an S. So those are some arcs in the way we kind of generate our line with arcs. Now, in addition to arcs that are fully 180 degrees, uh, we also have our radii, our radius, radii plural. So we're going to draw those now. Radius, uh, we're going to basically do a 90 degree radius. So if I break up that circle again, so if I break up the circle, so the distance from the center to the outside edge, that's the radius, uh, versus the diameter of the circle, which goes from one side to the other is the diameter. So, so we got the diameter and we've got the radius. So right now we're talking about radii. So, so here for this radius, I'm gonna do a 90 degree going that way, do a 90 degree radius going that way, come back up here, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. We're just gonna kinda do a series of practicing with this radius here. And you got some center point. Imagine that piece of pie or a slice of pizza, depending on whether you uh, cut your pizzas in wedges versus squares. So actually, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. We got time. It's time for a vote because I know it's getting lunchtime. All right. So the vote here is wedges versus squares on our slice of pizza pie. So if you prefer a slice of pizza wedge, raise your hand. Okay, Miss Baker, I'll let you count them up. All right. If you prefer a, the way Filippo's and Monocle's cuts it where you've got the square cuts of your pizza, go ahead and raise your hand. All right, from my perspective here, it looks like the pizza pie wedges kind of beats out the pizza pie squares. So, all right, so, so I just thought I'd throw that out there since it's getting since it's getting close to lunch and I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting kind of hungry, so. All right, so now that we got these radiuses, the radii here, I'm gonna also just kind of smoothly transition from one radius to another here as I go, so I'm gonna, Kind of start up here, and I'm going to smoothly transition from one to another. I'm going to do the same thing going the other direction this way. Notice it's just a smooth transition from one to the other. And then over here, kind of just a smooth transition from one to the other as we kind of practice some of these sketching techniques to get us in there. All right, so that sketch is now finished. So, good. Like I said, sketches are just real quick, simple drawings on paper to help convey information. Now we're going to get into the heart and we're going to actually create our very first sketch of a real object. So, and we are going, that object that we are going to sketch is what's referred to as a one, two, three block. It's a very common uh, tool uh, used in machining and welding. the work holding device to help us hold on to our work piece, but it's called a, a one, two, three block. 
So again, on this sheet of paper, we're gonna get our border lines up. Start with my horizontal lines, add in my vertical border line. Bring back my tile block. The more you guys do this, the more you practice it and you'll get that through. Uh, we're going to call this the isometric block. So on your title block on this one, so this is going to be called the isometric block or isometric block. And I'll let you guys, once you got that through, go ahead and fill out the rest of the title block. So with your name, intro to industry, All right. Now, raise your hand and let me know when you got your borderline and are all ready for me to continue. So, so. All right, everybody's good to go. So now, before I start with this one, we need to talk a little bit about uh, scale and proportions. So, uh, so here is my uh, Sharpie marker here. So I'm, we'll just talk about scale right now with this. So if I wanted to sketch this Sharpie marker on this paper, and I wanted it to be a scale of one to one. That means the size of the object is drawn the same size on paper that it is in real life. And just by putting this Sharpie marker up here, you realize, okay, I would be able to draw this Sharpie marker on a scale of one to one. That's the size relationship. Uh, the same size in real life is shown on paper. However, if I wanted to, if I needed to actually sketch this roll of paper towels, so notice that the roll of paper towels here is larger than my size of paper. And by the way, the size of this paper is eight and a half by 11. So, and I said to go and add a half an inch on the way around for our borderline, which really means our drawing area isn't even eight and a half by 11. But if I wanted to draw this full size or one to one scale, I wouldn't be able to because it's too large for my drawing area. So I would have to scale this down and draw this one to two or half size. If this were drawn half the size that it is in real life, uh, that's a scale and a relationship that I can put on paper. So that's the idea of that's the idea behind scale. Now, the other idea and the other thing that we got to talk about here is proportion. So, so if I'm looking straight onto this paper uh, roll of paper towels, notice on this length over here has some type of proportional relationship to the overall length here. So, or the height here has got a proportional relationship to the length, whatever that might be. Now, I might say it, from my perspective and my eye, I might say, well, uh, if I take the length of this line, basically this is about five times longer than this. So when I sketch it, I have to maintain that proportion. And I would draw this line and whatever the length of this line is, then this line would have to be five times longer than that line. That is proportion. So when we're sketching, uh, we kind of want to pay attention to scale and proportion to make sure that we have both of those and that we are in there uh, to get this as close to looking as close to real life as we can. So, 
So I'm going to start out with uh, a line, uh, just a vertical line, kind of in the center of my paper. And that's going to, I mentioned this is a one, two, three block. And the reason I say that is because a one, two, three block basically measures one inch by two inch by three. So this is a good way to kind of teach you this idea about proportion. So, and it doesn't matter. I don't have to draw the lines close to those dimensions. Again, it's a sketch. So accurate dimensions on this and accurate line lengths don't matter, but scale and proportion do. So I'm just going to draw a line, a vertical line right like that. And you guys can go ahead with that. So now that represents, in this case, the height of this part, which is going to be the two inch reference. So, so I'm going to do two other lines over here that are roughly going to be about half of the length of this line. So when you do this, this line here should be about half of the length of that vertical line. So again, this is gonna be, if I were to say, this is gonna represent one unit, this represents two units. And again, notice that from that point, this line goes up at about a 30 degree angle from our imaginary horizontal line here, our imaginary horizon line. Now, I'm also going to go back and extend back this way from that for the length, which is going to be three. So that's got to be about three times that length. So we're going to go back here now and draw a line about three times that length. So, and you'll end up with something that looks like that. Okay. At this point, so again, it's an isometric, so all of these lines have to be parallel. So I'm going to come back with my vertical line here. So, all right. And I see this side. Now, I'm going to come back now and go up to this point. I'm also going to draw back a parallel line here. So I can complete that view. And bring that vertical line here. And hopefully you guys are starting to see this take some shape here. So, so this is my side view. This will be my front view. And then my top view is what we refer to as my bird's eye view. Now I just kind of have to complete that. So back to now my parallel lines here and connect those together. Okay. So there is my isometric line. That's my isometric block drawing. And again, it's a representative of one, two, three blocks. So we've got a depth here, we've got a height here, and we've got kind of a length going this way. So one inch depth, two inch high, three inches long. It's kind of a representation of this one, two, three block. Okay. All right. Time to take this one off. Go ahead and get your next sheet ready with the border lines on the next one. Hey, my cat Willow is here curious about what's going on. So, wouldn't be surprised if she jumps up on the table. You guys might get a look at her. She's been kind of curious this morning about what I'm doing here. So, hopefully she won't knock anything off. She's what we refer to as our psycho kitty. Okay. okay, we're gonna finish off this sketch, then we'll take another quick break and then we'll come back for the last uh, drawings.
So you guys are doing great. Like I said, we're covering a lot of information here in a very short amount of time. So and you guys are doing great. So I appreciate appreciate it. Now uh, we're gonna name this drawing the orthographic block. So orthographic block. So that is uh, O R T H O G R A P H I C block. And you're gonna have to make your lettering kind of small to get all that to fit in. So orthographic block. Get your title block filled out. Okay. So. And then uh, once you have that together, uh, kind of give me a thumbs up so that I know everybody's on the same page. I'm gonna show you, we've got to uh, get this taken care of. This is one time on this sheet of paper that you just drew uh, on. I want you guys to take that sheet of paper, so fold it in half this way, and then fold it in half that way again. On the this one here that you just drew, uh, go ahead and fold it into quarters. So, so we wanna split that up, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Once you've got it folded, so fold it in half the lengthwise and then fold it in half again uh, so that you've got it kind of in four equal size rectangles. Okay. Now, you're going to use the crease lines. I'm going to draw these crease lines on my paper so because you wouldn't be able to see the crease lines uh, here, but you can see the crease lines in there. So, so I'm going to draw these. Just assume that this is my crease line uh, on your paper. So, so you guys are going to use these crease lines. Now, each of these four areas is got very special job to do on this drawing. So, and we have names for each of these. So uh, we're gonna label this is what we refer to as the front view there. Uh, over here is what we call a side view. And this is our top view. So now, each of these views is going to be a two-dimensional shape. In the case of our one, two, three block, that shape is just going to be a rectangle. And I'm going to always start in my front view. I will always start with the longest two sides of a shape. So, so I'm going to go ahead and again, maintain proportion here. So. If I'm representing my one, two, three block, the longest sides are three inches and two inches. So I'm going to kind of do this line so at that length. And then proportionally, my three inch line inside should kind of represent that there too. So, all right. Now, in this front view, we call this a width. So, And we call this a height. So, so since I'm using like a one, two, three block uh, on this, the width of that one, two, three blocks is three inches. The height is two inches. Again, though, this is a sketch, so we're not really too concerned with it, but we do want to make proportions. All right. Now. It is called a orthographic projection because we project over between views. Now, 
I can't replicate this uh, here for you like you guys can be using a leaded pencil. So when you do this, this is going to be kind of what we refer to as a construction line or a projection line. And you want these lines to be very, very faint. Notice how I've got uh, this corner right here. I'm just going to, I'm not going to touch my object line. I'm just going to kind of project over as light as you can from these two points over into that side view. Go ahead and project those over. And at the same point, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to project these two points up. So into my top view. So now, these projection lines should be very, very faint. You should not be able to see them at all. So and now I'm going to kind of use this to help block stuff in. So we know in the side view, so as I rotate this around, so the face and the surface that I see in this view is going to be the one that is closest to that crease line. Here, so I'm also going to draw this. Now, this is an important concept to understand. While we see this two dimensional shape and that surface of this front view, that becomes a line here in this side view. So when we're looking at it, it's just a line. And again, now this is what we call the depth. If I'm at two inches here and three inches here, this is going to be one inch here so go ahead now i can kind of complete this view by making my one inch blocker basically this is that rectangle here that's one inches now notice we call that our depth that's our depth and we still are showing our height so that side view shows depth and height so at this point in our top view, we can tell where this is going to come in at and this is come in at, but we don't really know the relationship between here and here and what that should be. So this is where we have another projection line. So we got to go up at 45 degrees in this corner. So where your crease line mates, draw a 45 degree line up. And then again, with your really light projection lines, now I'm going to project up to this point on both of these lines, because those are going to tell me where this falls in in this view. Now I can kind of come back over, project back over this way, right like that. And now I've kind of uh, marked off and I will now know okay well in this top view this is my rectangle or this is my object up here now in this top view so okay I'll go ahead and I'll darken everything in so that I have the full one two three block so Notice my view of that one, two, three block in the front view looks different from it, the side view. And of course, the top view looks different as well. We are looking at three different sides of that block. So, so those are three different sides of that block. And since we talked about here, we're showing width and height in the front view. We're showing depth and height in the side view. It goes to reason that in the top view, we're going to be showing depth going this way and width going this way. This is a relationship in orthographic projection in, in these orthographic or multi view drawings. You have to maintain this relationship between these views. So that is the industry standard. Those are the rules that have to be followed when we create these drawings. That way everybody knows exactly how one thing is related to the other. But it's a simple two-dimensional drawing in each of those. 
All right. So you guys are doing great. Uh, we're going to take another eight minute break, mass break. We're going to come in. We're going to finish up the last actual sketch. We're going to actually practice and sketch an object uh, here as the last thing that we do for today. But you guys can go ahead and take a real quick eight minute break and then I'll see you on the other side. 